NetGate PFSense 6100 Max. Before we do the unboxing, uh, let me tell you how did we ended up going with NetGate and how did we ended up uh, using PFSense. PFSense is an open source firewall software. You can technically install this software on anything as long as it has two network ports. So back in a day, back in 2009, I started working here in the United States as an IT professional. It was kind of an entry level job. I'm coming from a place when we only used Linksys firewalls and Netgear firewalls strictly. They were not really high-end products. They were just a more commercial, more businessy version of regular home-grade stuff. So I started working for this company in 2009. I was shocked to see a WatchGuard firewall, a Sonic wall. This is what the company was using. And I was blown away. It was a real deal. If, you, if you're not familiar with WatchGuard, it's really a super reliable, uh, really engineered, well-designed uh, product. And this is what we were using uh, for a little bit. And same thing with the Sonic Wall. I absolutely love Sonic Wall. It has the consistency. If you know one, if, you, if you're familiar with a low-end uh, model, doesn't matter if you get a high-end model or doesn't matter if you're five, six years later, the menu almost looks uh, identical. Uh, everything is, is, is building on, on the previous versions. So like, you don't have to spend a whole lot of time every couple of years to, to, to just learn something completely redesigned. And this is one of also the main benefic uh, benefit for, uh, for PFSense. So at the beginning, we were using WatchGuard and we were using SonicWall. And as the company was growing, getting larger and larger, larger clients, also the companies were growing with us. Uh, we hit the point when, for example, WatchGuard was a box which was suitable for, for 60 people or 50 people. The company grew out of the box and there was no way to exceed the user limit. They would have to get another box uh, for a higher user count. It's also had a reoccurring license fee. Every premium feature, premium feature, uh, was also requiring a different license a subscription for a year like vpn uh, for clients or uh, or uh, or uh, gateway antivirus anything which is not was just strictly just a plain uh, uh, and simple firewall feature was premium and you had to pay for it same thing with the sonic wall Eventually, we hit the client or reached the client with a ten or thirteen thousand dollars Sonic Wall. There was some kind of bug uh, in a Sonic Wall firmware, and they they needed a firmware update. And we found out that yes, Sonic Wall already has a fix for that, but you need a newer firmware since you have no subscription. Uh, you cannot download any of the newer version of the firmwares. So we went out to one of the reseller at Sonic Wall, got a quote. It was three or four thousand dollars for the three-year subscription. Uh, for to get the firmware update and get a uh, warranty established back on the existing hardware. So they were wondering, okay, if you're going to need VPN, that's going to require another set of licenses. If you want to use premium features like the, the viewpoint or a gateway antivirus, uh, whatnot, that's also going to require uh, additional uh, licenses. So this thing is just going to be a reoccurring fee over and over. So at that point, they said, yeah, no more. Uh, give us something else. Uh, we, we, we can't really afford all these reoccurring fees uh, every couple uh, years or every few years. So we started looking into open source firewalls, which has pretty much all the same capabilities, all the, the whistles and bells, but comes with no license cost reoccurring fees. So obviously there is a, a discussion. This is an open source firewall. While the WatchGuard and a Sonic wall closed, it's very uh, strict how the, everything is gets developed, uh, gets pushed into production. And uh, open source has pros and cons, a lot of pros, some cons, and... Uh, it's the benefit is definitely outweighed any kind of uh, risk uh, regards of, uh, going with the uh, with the open source version of a firewall application or appliance. So PFSense was great, but what kind of hardware should we use for PFSense? PFSense is is something which uh, requires technically no. Uh, crazy hardware you can toss it on an old Dell Optiplex desktop with with two NICs 
and you would be up and running but we need something presentable something reliable so at the first time when we were given a shot to pfSense we used a Supermicro 1U server and Dell PowerEdge or series of servers 1U servers that was an overkill even the lowest version of, of servers uh, hardware and everything was was just significantly above uh, what we needed but it was super reliable so okay we have these larger clients they had a rack we could we could fit all these uh kind of home uh, applications what we set it up uh, obviously the warranty was was belong to dell or supermicro the software uh, had no warranty it was technically us but we had the freedom with all with going to the, the vpn the free vpn open vpn built in uh, monitoring apps blocking apps uh, all, all kinds of stuff was all available for no additional cost so that was great so but what we're going to do with smaller clients, we had clients with the five employee, 10, 15, 20. We cannot just give them a, a Dell PowerEdge server as a firewall and just toss it on their shelf uh, for a network closet because it physically it was just an uh, it was just an overkill as an overpowered system. It was significantly more uh, than that just buying some kind of box. So what are you going to get? So we stumbled across uh, on NetGate. It was, I think, over a decade ago. And uh, we could have we could have made a, a better choice. Uh, this thing is solid and reliable as a, as a Honda or a Toyota, uh, regards of the quality. Uh, we probably have 50, 60 of these uh, in production, uh, and 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 I can call two times. We we had to call NetGate uh, for uh, warranty related sort of stuff. One of the firewall had an SSD failure, which obviously the SSD is not made by NetGate. We called uh, NetGate. We told them like the, the SSD failed in a firewall and uh, the army was a breeze. It, it literally took no time to set up a ticket and get a replacement drive. And the other time I can recall I uh, was on site. Um, what happened is there was a power outage and when the box rebooted, uh, it's something crashed and PFSense was unable to load. Uh, the box still had a NetGate warranty on it. I called their support. They uh, answered the call uh, very quickly. Uh, the the, uh, the support per person who I ended up working with was super knowledgeable. There were no nonsense. Uh, he straight up gave me the instructions how to uh, reinstall uh, the NetGate PFSense uh, package or firmware on it or, or software on it and then we could just restore the the previously existing backup configuration before the crash so the client was up and running in no time and in the in this one decade history with about 50 to 60 of these boxes in production that's pretty much all what happened I this is not a sponsored video uh, NetGate doesn't send us any free product uh, anything we buy and purchase we go onto their website and just buy it straight from there or just in this case we are telling our clients like hey go to NetGate get this particular model with the solid state optional upgrade and then you're good to go so yeah um, I'm probably not the best person to to represent or present uh, the firewalls and uh, unfortunately I was available so you got stuck with me uh, for this time but uh, let's do the unboxing and let me tell you a couple more things uh, not just about the box just in overall experience with PFSense and uh, and with this quality so uh, I may or may not uh, already did this unboxing one time. I can confirm, neither deny. So that happened. But uh, this is what you get uh, in a box. Uh, you're going to get a little warranty card and technical support information, QR code, how to start. Uh, so it comes with a micro USB cable. This is what we're going to use as a console cable. And. Uh, it's great. I always leave this on site all the time, plugged into the box. Uh, I never put it anywhere else. Uh, if there's anything I need to do and I need the console cable, it's ready to go. Uh, I would suggest the same thing or tape it to the box. Uh, make sure the client don't lose it. Uh, we have a 60 watt uh, power supply with this awesome feature with this screw type connector. You technically screw this in and a power cable cannot come out. Uh, I have to admit 
It happened to me when I was doing unrelated work in a server rack and somehow I hit uh, the box and the box fell down and was saved by the network cables, uh, the LAN and a VAN cable. But since this was screwed in, the power supply remained connected. So that caused no downtime. Uh, very simple, very uh, cheap solution, but super effective when it comes down to, uh, to loose uh, uh, power cables or power supplies. So we have a box in here. This came with a, with an anti-static bag. I removed that. We have a lot of Medgate uh, stickers, which has been happening for a while. And in here, we just have the cable for the power supply. So let me move this out of the way. And uh, let me tell you a couple things about this particular box and in Netgate General. So the box is super reliable. Uh, I cannot be more happy. Uh, we never uh, ended up purchasing the very baseline models. I think we did once or twice and, and the box was just sluggish and slow. So we uh, kind of positioned ourselves to the 3000, 4000, 6000 series or above if it's a larger client. And uh, the reason why we picked uh, the 6000 series is because this is the first model uh, which in a NetGate line which has SFP modules or capable to handle SFP modules. If you have a Comcast or Verizon Fios business glass connection, uh, you're going to end it up just with uh, the fiber connection and then you're going to need an SFP module to connect your firewall. And this thing is great. So just uh, looking at the ports, I think we have... Uh, uh, SIM cards options in here behind Discover, which we never used. Uh, we also have uh, a regular uh, console port. I think it's a Cisco compatible port. We have the USB micro connection in here. This is where the console cable gets attached. We have VAN1, which is one gig ports. Uh, it could be an RG45 equipped cable and an SFP module. When you set this firewall up, you set VAN up, doesn't matter where the cable is en ended up actually going to. VAN 2, same thing in here. We have uh, VAN 3 and VAN 4. These are 10 gig uh, SFP modules. You can have fiber or you can have regular uh, RG45 uh, connectors through the SFP module. You have the freedom and you have LAN 1, 2, 3, 4 and this is not a switch. It is not a switch anymore. In a previous generation, I think in a 3000 models, uh, we had four ports in here and that was a switch. And thanks for NetGate, this is no longer a switch. These are unswitched 2.5 gig ports, uh, which give us way more flexibility what kind of traffic, what are you going to do? This could be also uh, optional internet ports or, or anything you, you want to make it. So it, it is really great. We have some USB ports in here uh, and inside the box, we have eight gigs of onboard RAM and a 16 gigs of onboard storage, but uh, you can select 128 gig solid state. And this is what we do. And the reason why we find out that sometimes when we need more logs or I want to go back in a full history, uh, the 16 gigs might not be large enough, but uh, but the 128 gig is, is, is a really good options to have that. We also have a four core Intel CPU in this thing with firewalls. Uh, different packages installed on a box. There is absolutely no issues with performance. And another thing I realized when I was replacing an older firewall was also a NetGate uh, on site that we don't have a fan anymore. Uh, that box had a fan. It wasn't loud. We haven't had a single fan failure, but I think if we can make it without a fan, this thing has a ginormous heat skin. When I pulled this firewall apart just to see what's inside, uh, first of all, I was surprised how busy is the circuit board inside, but that shouldn't be a surprise because we have all these ports and, and we have all great hardware supporting uh, on, 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 on a circuit board. And uh, this thing is, is pretty much... Uh, comes probably 80% of the weight with this huge heat skin. We have no fan in here, which is awesome. Again, this is not a sponsored video. Um, I literally uh, sent a, a client to NetGate and these are going out to their office. And it's going to be a site to site VPN, a main uh, office connecting to three other PF Sense. This works flawlessly if you are considered to switch to, to PF Sense or NetGate. It, it is awesome. You, you don't, PF Sense, you can run it technically from any, any hardware, even a 10 year old, uh, but this is a significantly 
better solution. Uh, it's eight or nine hundred dollar as it is. I think nine hundred with a solid state. It's a cost of one single business class desktop. And it lasts, it lasts. If there's any complaint for NetGate, it lasts way longer than it should. Uh, 10 years, some of them still, uh, it shouldn't be, but it's. Uh, I heard uh, that some client is still using this almost uh, close to 10 years, and it's still running without a single hiccup or glitch. Very reliable stuff. Uh, some of the models had issues. If there's a power uh, flick or your battery backup wasn't holding a charge, uh, that could have... Uh, Cause some issues uh, with the older, older, older models. Sometimes when the power came back or the internet came back, uh, the box wasn't recognizing if the LAN cable or a VAN cable was plugged in or not. You have to unplug the power cord, plug it back, or unplug the network or a VAN port and plug it back, and you were back in business. Uh, we used in a failover situation when we had uh, two ISP or, or a 4G connector uh, plug it in uh, through the LAN cables from coming out from the 4G or 5G modem. This thing has all the whistles and bells. Uh, if you familiar with PFSense on, on a small uh, appliance or for a small client, it's going to be the same exact thing for a largest appliance what they have. Uh, nothing really changes regards of the menu. Uh, once you learn how to do things, you can you can just keep applying that knowledge uh, for years or, or or for a decade it's it is awesome we are a small independent shop uh, i have a freedom uh, to choose any brand any manufacturer any model there's no management above me telling me that hey uh, we have a contract or we uh, have to sell sonic walls because this is where we make uh, the biggest uh, uh, revenue uh, this is where the markup is really high and it's also good because we're going to resell the license every uh, year or every three years so we're going to make money on that no uh, i can i can really go with anything and it's only coming down what i'm going to use uh, not doesn't matter if it's firewall it could be a server a laptop a desktop a switch anything i'm, I'm really fortunate uh, i i I've been seeing this uh, when some companies are okay. The company policy we are using, uh, I'm just gonna say, uh, Trend Mac micro antivirus because that's where we make money. We're gonna use Sonic Wall because that's how we make money. Uh, we got a big discount on, I'm just gonna say, HP, Dell, and over whatever gear. And this is what strictly we use, and we don't look into other products or other brands. I don't look into other. Uh, products or brands because I'm super happy with uh, NetGate and PFSense how everything is is played out uh, in this in this pretty much past decade or even even longer and again uh, this is not a sponsored video uh, my client paid for all these firewalls I just wanted to review and uh, say thank you for um, uh, for this for this brand how how reliable and is and it's help us growing and our client is growing uh, with uh, with their business and uh, which means it's good for us uh, if there is anything else i have to point out and could be better i know you are if netgage watches this video which they probably shouldn't because i i'm again i'm not the person who should uh showcase these uh products uh and uh the only thing as a tech, I know this is a rack mountable or this could be a wall mountable unit. And in some case, we definitely do that. In other cases, uh, that's not the case. I, I don't have enough space. It's it's too messy. It's too crowded. I can't do that. But have this weird thing with, with us that we're stacking things. And when we're stacking things, the box can overheat. Like this thing is not overheating. I run this for a, for a day almost before uh, we put it out in production just to see how it uh, it will hold up and it's warm it is not hot it's just warm it's perfectly fine but sometimes a comcast box or it's a poe switch or something is crazy hot and we not really think about it or you don't have the experience yet and you're stacking boxes on top of each other's i had a couple uh, tickets when i had to go out the client said my internet is super slow i called my uh, internet service provider they confirmed that there's not uh their issue is something in my own network it was a net gate with a metal case and the box was crazy hot so i quickly looked around and just just find something and uh let's for example a stack of that hard drive i put uh, one hard drive here one hard drive here the cable just make it you can't really make uh you don't have network you not have anything with you just to raise the box up fix the issue so if you would consider to have maybe 
a one inch or a half an inch, uh, a two centimeter or one centimeter rubber legs, which we could just stick to the bottom of the box. That would be helpful. Had this old box, everything got restored in here, everything got updated. So when I went to uh, the last time to replace a, a firewall, upgrade the firewall, the net gate was running in here, had one uh, van port, one uh, LAN port. Uh, it was a warehouse. They said, like, no, you shouldn't replace the firewall in production time. Please come back over the weekend. I, I said, I, I promise there's going to be no downtime. Uh, if uh, probably going to be less than a minute, if anything goes wrong, I'm just going to switch you back to your up and running firewall. And we're going to try to do this another day or over the weekend. Then I said, like, okay, go ahead and try. So I box was restored, configured, updated, fully updated. I unplugged the LAN port and a VAN port from the old net gate, plugged it into a new one, and a downtime was seven seconds. Uh, the client couldn't be more happy, and uh, we're going to see them uh, the next time when we're going to do this, and it's going to be a long, long time. Uh, other things uh, you can run into is this uh, hardware makes you lazy. Uh, you have to make sure that you do that a firmware update regularly. It's not auto. Uh, you have to uh, click on check and manually run it. If you get way behind the firmware, we ran into an issue when the box just borked. It could not reboot. Uh, you had to go out on site and uh, reinstall PFSense and restore or set them up with a new firewall. So we always factored in the best way to handle this is it, it it's the experience i'm sorry with netgate is kind of set to forget it is not uh, just like a car or anything else it needs maintenance it's one thing you just have to do is click uh, update and run uh, other than that we pretty much never ran into uh, i just replaced one of them it was almost a four hour round trip that's how confident we are that this box is gonna run five six years i heard it's it's even can last longer i heard from other people so if you have any question uh, in a comment section let me know um getting close to 1000 subscribers if you could hit me up with a like and a subscribe i would really appreciate it thank you so much for your time i see you in the next video scott's out